Rise and shine, it's six o'clock. Good morning, welcome to LJ News. Entrepreneur John Keats has known fitness queen Michelle Bridges since the late 1990s when she roared into Sydney in a sports girl barina with everything she owned in the boot and began working in a gym in his car dealership. He has watched her become a millionaire and a mother, fall in love and have her heart broken, and become a town of Australian fitness before weathering the public disgrace of being caught drink driving with her then four-year-old son Axel in the backseat. The 1970s were tough for single mothers. Maureen Bridges, now Partridge, paid a neighbour to take care of her two daughters after school while she worked as a secretary, but had no backup if the girls were sick and would have to leave them alone. My heart goes out to her, said Bridges. My life by design has been completely manufactured by the opposite way. I had all of my career, I had a child quite late in life, and now I am able to spend more time with him because I did the hard yards in the early years. What was Bridges' escape? It still is. She loved the discipline, the competition, and the camaraderie. It was my rock, my place of solace, she says. At school, she ran aerobics classes for the students who wanted to avoid competitive sports, then expanded her enterprise to local squash courts. You'd never get away with it now, a 14-year-old loose on the general public, she says. When Bridges arrived, the fitness industry was at a crossroads. It was the dying end of the G-string over tights era when freestyle aerobics reigned, but gyms were losing members because the routines, choreographed by the instructors, were so complicated. Bridges, charisma, and no-nonsense style drew bigger than usual numbers to the floor, and so her reputation grew. You were a bit of a rock star, getting 100 people to your class, she reflects. With her new partner Willis, a handsome former army trainer who had three children to two women, and on falling pregnant with Axel at 44, Bridges did not want to make that mistake again. She took her foot off the accelerator. In some ways, some were not happy about that because the business was such a juggernaut and there were other people involved, she says. But I was the face of it, and that was a lot. More sold out of 12 WBT in 2015, and the other two major shareholders fall in 2018. Bridges, who appears wary of talking about the business split, is our sole director. On January 26th, 2020, Bridges was driving Axel to the beach in her Range Rover when, at about 11.30am in Bellevue Hill, a wealthy suburb in Sydney's east, police signaled her to pull over from a random breath test. She initially hit her brakes and changed lanes, then Bridges told officers she'd used mouthwash five minutes earlier and drunk alcohol the previous night. I felt very alone. You're putting on a brave face, and I'm good, I'm fine. So from the outside looking in, other than my very close friends and family, no one would have known what was going on for me, and for us. It was a challenge. To be honest, it was the hardest time of my life ever leading up to what happened. I felt like I was in a fog. I didn't know what was happening. I didn't understand. Bridges never wanted a baby when she was with Moore, who has grown up children. He would always say to me, if you want to have kids, we can do it, she says. But it was never, let's do it together. I think he wasn't really keen, but would do it for me. I didn't know if that was enough to get me over the line. Plus, business and career, it was incredible. When I was Axel's dad, the conversation came about, and I was excited by the prospect. It felt different. Axel likes trains and Lego and books. He has his mother's striking blue eyes. Bridges tries to avoid using babysitters and keeps school-friendly work hours where possible. She takes Axel to swimming, karate, and rugby union. She's the co-coach of his Barrel Blacks under-16, alongside a former representative of a South African super rugby team. They are very overqualified, says Keats. It's like herding cats. The drive that helped propel bridges to stardom has not gone. It's just focused on different, perhaps more rewarding things. Bridges' force of will, 
which saw her through a sometimes difficult childhood, drove her to wealth, influence, and fame. But when she got there, she realized it was not quite where she wanted to be. Then, like so many women before her, motherhood shifted the tectonic plates of Bridges world. Perhaps Bill Moore's description eight years ago of Bridges as every woman is even more apt now than it was then.